I'm Garland Thompson, Media and Program Manager for the Salinas Public Library. These interviews are presented as part of Salinas Stories. The interviews are as recorded and do not necessarily represent the views of the City of Salinas or the Salinas Public Library. For further information, see the City of Salinas Disclosure and Use Policy. My name is April Medina. This is my daughter, Kazi Medina. Hi. And my daughter, Elisa. Hi. Um, I'm a native of the area. I was actually born out here in Salinas, um, way back in 72. Uh, my parents came here from Michigan in the early um, 60s. And my mom, uh, my dad was a civil servant for the military. He worked over at Fort Ord. Um, and my mom worked off and on at the, um, the fish packing company. I forget what the name of it is. <laughs> Um, the one here in Salinas, the fish packing company. Remember the one we were talking about earlier? Off of Sanborn? I forget the Sanborn. Yeah, okay. And um, what else do you want me to? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. And where did you live? Where did you live? Um, we lived out on River Road. Uh, we lived out there until I was about 13. Um, my older sisters, I have five older sisters. And um, my parents moved out to Georgia. And so I went with them. I was 13. And um, once I graduated from high school out there, I joined the military. And I ended up back here in Monterey at the language school for about a year and a half. And I uh, went to Korea and spent about four more years in the military in the Air Force. And got out. And I came back to Salinas because I just can't seem to stay away. I love it here. What do you love about Salinas? The weather. It's just the weather and the people are so nice. Um, and you've got access to so many wonderful things and the ocean. Um, and I love to be outdoors and going hiking. And it's just the perfect place for it. So now you live in the San Diego area? Right. When I got out of the military, we moved out. Um, to San Juan Grade Road. There was an apartment complex out there that were really nice and quiet. Um, and we had two kids at the time, so it was really nice um, and safe for the kids. And the closest creek that was nearby was the Santa Rita Creek and the Santa Rita Park. And we would always go over there. The kids used to love to play in the playground. And of course, if there's water nearby, the kids are going to get in it. So from the very beginning, they were always out there looking at um, trying to find pollywogs or frogs. Or, and I'm trying not to have them bring them home, but um, you know, a few little animals came home with us. Um, but they were always out in the, in the creek and looking at the, the plants. And, you know, of course, I try to teach them stuff about the creek and where it comes from and how to keep it clean and stuff like that. And um, a couple years later, we um, moved out of the apartment complex and move into um, a house nearby. So we're even closer to the creek. And by that time, I had two more kids. And again, the creek was the, the place where we would go, the, the playground. And um, now that they're older, it's even nicer because we can all kind of go exploring. We went and um, looking for what kind of wildlife we can find and look at the animal tracks. They've trying to figure out, are they cats? Are they dogs? Or are they wild animals? Or <laughs> there were chihuahuas. Now this is the creek they have a, a park. There's a, um, a school, and um, there's the, the creek goes over. There's a couple bridge bridges. Um, the kids always go back and forth. and um, They've done um, a little excavating. They've kind of cleared it out a little bit, and that made some changes. Yeah, it's um, skew abatement makes them dredge the creek. It has a little bit of a cement bottom in it, and the skew abatement uh, makes them dredge it. Mm -hmm. Part of it does, um, which was once they dredged it, I had never seen it before, the, the cement bottom. I thought it was something new, but we just never actually could see it before. Um, so when the, when the creek is running like really full, you don't even notice it. It, gets, it almost covers it all up. But once it gets low, um, you can see it really well. So somebody sometime put cement in the bottom? In the 70s, when they first developed Santa Rita. Was the creek already there? Mm -hmm. okay. And they straightened it with cement in the bottom of it, so it won't down. 
but the problem is you get erosion on the farm fields above upstream, and it flattens out there, so the sediment deposits there. And which is not bad, but um, mosquito abatement uh, makes them. Recently, they found West Nile near the school, and so when that happened, then now they make keep it cleaned out. Um, and there's just a confluence of bad things happening that's causing this. And, uh, farming practices allows erosion, and no tree covers to keep the growth down, and so it's. Hopefully this will change around. So how long have you been going down to the um, Since we got here, like in 2000, um, first with the two older two and, and now all of them, um, it's kind of something that we try to do, like they get out of school and to kind of give them a little break before they start doing their homework, we'll go down there and take a look around and um, have little little hikes. And we kind of wish that there was um, like a, a little bit more of a nature trail where you could follow the whole creek. Um, but right now we're kind of just limited to the area by the school and stuff like that. But even that is, is really good. We're working on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robin mentioned that that might be a possibility in the future, which I think would be great. Because where we live, and the creek goes all the way down, um, all the way over to uh, Russell Road. And it's funny because her friend lives right over there on the... Um, on Russell Road, and her house is right by the creek. So she's always saying it would be great if you could start on one end of the creek and then hike all the way around. And um, I mean, it just it gets the kids outside and makes them really um, aware. They always, you know, they'll see the trash in there and, and they like to come along and help me pick up trash and we put it in the trash can and um, just makes them a lot more aware of nature. Um, especially, I mean, there's really nothing else around. So that's the, really the only place where we can go to. Um, so we'd like to see it maybe expanded or taken a little bit better care of. Have you girls found any frogs this year? No, oh. we haven't found it any this did, year. Did you find them last year or the year before? We Couple found them years. when I was probably six. Um, we found them. I'm nine and we started finding them when these boys were over there and he kind of yelled out, we found frogs. We kind of went over there and we were going to go look for frogs, and there wa was actually water snakes. Oh, so you've seen snakes in there. When was that? Mm. This year or a few years ago? Fear, few years ago. So you think that there's a little less frogs and stuff now than there yes. was a few years ago? Yeah, because remember when we went, I think it's the same time, um, there was like the little polywogs, so we got to see them in the earlier stages, and um, they were trying to get in there to catch one, and I think someone fell in the creek, their older brother. <laughs> yeah, stepped in the wrong place, and he ended up getting a nice dunk in the creek. <laughs> they didn't use pesticides or anything like that to, to clean out. rats or... Yeah, not that I'm aware of. I mean, no. they, they might have. I mean, it's with the... Stream agricultural um, processes that are diminishing the amphibian population. So it's, it's been gone downhill since I've been there in 95. It's diminished since then. And this year I've heard no peeps, none. Which well, it's a little disturbing because they've been there and now they're not. Yeah, I mean, since they've dredged it, I mean, a lot of the plants that are usually like alongside the creek are all gone. Um, so it's kind of all open. Um, I mean, all we'll see is like little because we were, as we were walking, we're looking to see where we can find, and there's just like little um, shells, almost like like um, almost like snails, you know, like their little water snails and stuff in there. And I mean, half the time those are all dead, um, but we still see a few of them that are alive. So they're you know, little snails. They're like I think they're like water snails, but they're um, all along the edges of them. And I mean, have you guys seen any other little critters or? Yeah. Which ones? Um, I thought I saw like. It kind of looked like a little fish. Oh, really? Maybe. Sometimes people have little mm -hmm. fish in there. But do you yeah. see much bird life over there? Um, um, a little bit. Um, right now, I think it's been a little bit slowed. What about you, Lisa? Do you think you've seen some birds in there? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of bushes. If you go up one side, there's um, a lot of big trees and bushes. And there's um, even... Was it wild raspberries or blueberries that you guys saw in there? Raspberries. I think it was blueberries. 
berries. There's wild berries. So sometimes the kids will go in there. Blackberries. Blackberries. Mm -hmm. So the kids will go in there and, and try to see what they can find. And Alex um, was picking them. He was picking them. Yeah, the blackberries. Their older brother they like to go and see if they can find them. And we go by the the tree. The tree over there by the bridge, and that's where the blackberries were at. Yeah. No, they were like on the other side of it. But there's a lot of um, the little birds will live in those bushes and stuff in there and we saw a nest in the tree oh you did see a nest in there mm -hmm. and let's we see didn't what see the bird though yeah yeah we just saw the nest but they like to hike in there and um we've been going a little bit farther down and there's um the um the big trees they look like almost like horse tails mm -hmm. and so they they've discovered those ones and they're we took them home it looks like home and they they, had, they Three took, or four. took a couple samples of the of the bushes so they could remember them. And uh, one interesting thing, too, it looks like there's, um, we found a lot of clay. I don't know if it's just because they've dredged it up and it's not really mud, but there's like a lot of clay in there that we didn't see before. So I think it's because of the, the dredging and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's one new thing that we discovered just recently. I accidentally touched and mistaked it for a rock. And yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like mud mixed with clay. But, I mean, you know, up until maybe about a year ago, I mean, we'd just go there to play and look at the um, the animals in the creek. Um, but then I was taking a GIS class, and I met Robin, and she um, kind of got me involved with um, her project, which is the, the Santa Rita and Bolsonaro's, um Watershed Group. And she told us that, you know, she's having a creek fair coming up, and she asked us if we'd like to participate. And so um, one thing that I had learned from my other classes, it was... Um, it was kind of something for kids to get them involved with the um, the creek fair. It teaches them how to build a bracelet, and it has like the different um, the uh, the uh, the water cycle. So when the water starts in the sky, and then the um, it rains, and then to the ground, and through the ground water. And so there was a bead for each color of the um, the water cycle. So the kids, I set up a table at the at the creek fair. A lot of and, people came, mm -hmm, and they they were my helpers and they would help me, um, we would teach the kids about the water cycle and they'd help them put together the bracelet. And um, while I was doing that, they would come help me for a little while and they'd go see the other booths. There were some really neat ones. Did you guys want to tell me about the, the other booths that you went and looked at? There was this one booth that was like a mountain and there was a city and all the pesticides and what goes in the ocean. They Trash. They oh, use. Mm -hmm. They use substitute things to act like other things. And oh, yeah. They use water and food coloring to like spray water and. It Did you use happened. one that would look like oil? Yes. Yes. Was it like a coffee? That was yes. The coffee Old stuff. coffee. So they had this really nice. Um, like a plastic simulation of like the valley of the watershed. of the watershed, and so they would um, put little like pieces of plastic, and um, then they would start pouring like a little bit of dirt and um, some these. different food colorings, and then they would show what would happen once the rain fell, which they would simulate with some water, and then how everything would then flow into the creeks and then out to the ocean. So it gave the kids a really good idea of. Of what's happening and storm. you know what the the consequences are there are if you if you big storm do you remember drain. the name of the the um what group did that that, that was um this last one was return the natives at the at the end of the whole <coughs> fair like they have a little drawing with that you oh the, one of the kids favorite part at the um the creek fair was everyone who attended got um some a ticket to enter into the raffles and and so were they were raffling off bags. um there was bags and there and was water bottles. We helped raffle them off. Mm -hmm. We won a couple things, a couple bags, and some plants. The grand a prize was, was a water barrel that you could hook up um, to your gutters at your home and catch the, the rainwater coming off of your, and your roof. There was other and things. And like, that was the one thing that we really wanted. And then, But there was a couple other cool ones. There was the um, worm, the worm farm. Or wow. you could um, have your worms. It was the red wigglers, was it? And... Um, I think you would feed him with, was it straw? Or what would you give him to, you your scraps? Them, scraps and um, newspaper. And then they would do their thing, and then the result was like this really potent liquid fertilizer that you could use on your plants. So it was awesome. I mean, who wouldn't want to have a worm farm? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't win it. We and won so the um, they giant. Liked the, that, well, there was that one, and but what they really wanted was the rain barrel. And um, we won it. <laughs> and yes, my son. I started whining. 
they were very excited. Um, well, I forgot to bring the picture, but um, there's a picture of us and my son and my daughter, and they were very excited. And they also, um, we were very lucky at that raffle. We got some, some really cool plants. And what else did we get? Do you remember? Uh, we got the bags, the, the, okay. the um, I really wanted the, the barrel, the, some plants, and that was it. That was it? Yeah. Oh, wait, and we um, had a hard time getting home. And, uh, I was, what? The water bottles? Water bottles. Mm hmm Wait, did you ever say that? No, I think Mom already said that. Oh. Did you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what else did we so do? So we sent twice. Um, <laughs> we went down, uh, we helped at the end. We emptied the model and... Oh, you help everyone clean yeah. up afterwards? Yeah. Because there was a couple um, other tables that were really giving up good information. It was information. very windy and our sign kept on falling down. Do you remember the other table that was, um, I believe it was, was it Cal Water? Mm -hmm. um, that had information about... Um, you know, good water practices and, and we, stuff like that. And I know you guys went down there and visited it. And um, they, we got um, little uh, knickknacks, little um, sponges, sponges of uh, that the when you put in water, water they would explode. Well, not, well, not explode, but like <laughs> kind of like expand. 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 They were like little water drops. Different colors. Uh, but they had a lot of spray good resources. Nozzle. The spray nozzle for um, the hose that we use in the backyard. In it's a little more water friendly, so it'll uh, uh, not use so much stuff, water. Stuff for your showers and mm -hmm. the sink. What else? And Some fun activity things. Mm -hmm. And so then after the creek fair, um, we talked to Robin again, and she had some more opportunities for us um, to get the kids involved. And... We just did this last weekend. It was we went um, down our street and the, the street over, and we stenciled um, on the storm drains. That way, people would know that the trash and stuff, if it goes in there, it's going to go into the Santa Rita Creek and then eventually out to the um, to the ocean. So these two are the ones that helped me. You guys want to tell them a little bit about what you did? And we went around the whole place. And what was the very first thing we did? First thing we did was, was lay out. Lay okay. down the tape and then painted the white, white. paint on and it. And then after we went we around did, the circle and, and after we were done, we, we would, when it was dry, um, we'd spray paint blue stencils. Do you remember what it said? Uh, um, keep clean we, leads to Sa Santa Rita Creek. Mm -hmm. Something. And we also said Well, it that was, it was backwards. Lease the San Rita Creek, keep it clean. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to get them involved. Um, and we're hoping that maybe um, we can get the word around to the rest of the neighborhood and we'll get the rest of the storm drains done. Drains done. I don't know when it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you guys want to show your pictures and tell them? Here, Kazi, mm -hmm. if you want, why don't you go first and tell them about what your picture is. Okay. And if you want, I'll hold up your big picture, too. Is this one yours? Yes. Um, I drew where we were at when we walked over there. We were going to go over to where the... I know. Okay. Okay. Um, where when you walk over there, then that's where we found all the animal tracks. And but first, um, when you walk, you have to like there's this sand place um, that we. Small hill. It was kind of like a little small hill. Of sand. Um, we really liked it, so we kind of named it Sandy Island, and the river was right there, so we played around in it. And we made toy little boats, and Shipped our mom down. was over on, on, the other side. on the other side, and we would um, put the, them in the water, them in the water, and they would flow down the creek, and the mom would catch them. them. So tell me about your picture. Well, this was where the Sandy Island was. We got one of the horse tails and we put it in the sand. 
Okay. Do you want to tell them a little about this one? Okay. And this part is where we walk through. There's um, it was there's the road above it. On this side, there was more sand than that side. And when you walk out, there would be like ledge on that side, and it was kind of hard to get on to the other side over there. So, um. When we were going to go in, this side was all flooded, so we had to go into that side, and then we jumped over to that side and we walked all the way over there. Does it, can I say one thing? Sure. Do um, you want to show yours? Sure. Well, here, I'll hold yours. Okay. And there's, you can hold the little one. Pretty much mine's the same picture, except this one's at a different angle. Um, here under the. Um, Bridge, uh, there's uh, so the, the bridge or the road. Yeah, this the is the this is the, the oh. footbridge by the um over by Santa Rita School. Isn't this San, where's the Santa Rita School at, Lisa? Right here. Cool. And under here, it's more watery than the other parts of it. Mm -hmm. Like we go play in it, the water, like find little fish and tadpoles and. Where we used to, the, under the bridge, that's where we'd pull our little boats and they'd go off to the other side. And that's it. But we also discovered at their school, um, La Jolla School, the, do you remember, was it last year in fourth grade? Mm -hmm. That you went and did the, um, oh, the planting? No, at, third grade. In th third grade, they got together um, a group of the kids. We went to Natividad Creek Park. They went to Natividad Creek Park. We planted and, like... Did you pick up, up trash? Yeah, and we ate lunch. And we were, it was very cold, and we got dirty a lot. Well, they went over there. They gave them a tour so they could see the creek, um, and they... Did they teach you a little bit about the native plants that live there? Yes. And then they got to kind of team up, and they planted um, some native plants, and then uh, went and helped cleaned up and mm. had lunch. So it was really nice that the schools were getting involved, too, um, and, and teaching them about the local area and how to keep it clean. So when she came home, she had information to share with us, too. So do you guys have a garden at Leo? Yes, we yeah, do. Uh, we got... A pumpkin garden, and Wait. a lot of times on Halloween we'd get them, and like the kindergartens would draw on them or something. And the in the li we'd put a, one of the giant ones in the library, and we'd weigh in. Whoever got closest or exact would get a prize, and we'd the big get prize the they get closest would get. Some other prize, the grand prize for the one who got it exactly or closest would, would get, get the, pump. the pumpkin. Cool. These guys ever get close? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, one year it was um, 25, and I guess 20, and I still didn't get anything. <laughs> yeah. She Caitlin was. guessed it exact, so uh, she got grand this prize. year. Um, uh, someone wanted in my class. It was a music day when I was out playing music, and it was Matthew Mimer who won it. So are there rain barrels now by your garden? Have you seen them? Mm, yeah. There's two rain um, barrels, huh? Yeah, they were painted with butterflies. Aww. I saw it with um, when Mr. Sullivan was pretty much watering the garden. Mm. Do your plants like that kind of water? Are mm. they able to prove? Yeah. Yes. It is. They've done a Except really great job. For the pumpkins. We haven't seen any It pumpkins looks really nice. Lately. They do a really good job over there. Mm -hmm. And you have a drip irrigation system, don't you? It goes through little pipes and it drips drops of water can happen. Yes. Very nice. So, any other you two girls born in Salinas or what? I was born in Maryland. And I was born here at Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. Okay, so you've spent all your lives here, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when she was born in and, in June, uh, by August she was out here. And a year later, you I born. was born. <laughs> in 2001. I was only there for a couple months. 
six. So what's your favorite part about living where you live now? The creek. The creek. Ah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite thing to do by the creek? Do you like to go and... I mostly um, like splashing in the water. We like to go to the sand place. I always imagine that like it's more full and it's really new. Do you guys like exploring and looking at the animals? Yes. Yes. One time we found a cat and we were saying, the cat has rabies. <laughs> we're running. They have a very good imagination. So. <laughs> Do you have a lot of feral cats out here? Cats that are. Yes. Like, oh, I've seen. Not, not too bad. No. No. We really haven't noticed any in the area. I mean, I've seen most dogs really in the good. road, but I don't know if they were strays or not. Oh, no, I mean, it's it's, it's a really cats. nice neighborhood to live in. Um, mm -hmm. The people are really nice and. Um, everyone tends to keep things really nice and clean. And there's a couple, um, couple dogs that you know who they, they have tags and stuff like that. And they, they're kind of, you see them all the time. They'll run up and down the roads, but they're like, they're like kind of like regulars, you know, oh, that belongs to so-and-so. And so it's, it's, it's been really good. Um, two people in my class live near me. One's named Raymond, one's named Jesus. Your school's very close, huh? Mm -hmm. My friend lives, like, kind of pretty much right next to the Greek, so I can just walk up the Greek and get there. So, yeah, they're, they're both, um, they got bikes for their for Christmas, and so um, they're, Lisa already knows how to ride a bike, and Kazi's learning. She wants to get some training reels, so we're hoping that we get, we'll get bikes for the rest of the family, so that way we can go maybe up the Greek. explore a little bit and go More a little bit farther. Greek. Each time we... It would be nice. We were hoping... I mean, there's kind of a little side path. Um, but it's bumpy. Yeah, so... But that would be really nice um, if we could kind of get in there. I fell on my scooter, and it really hurt. Oh, your scooter? Yeah, you're still learning how to ride your bike. But I'm doing good. It's very... Well, it looks like... It's, it's actually big enough, so maybe that if... Um, uh, so maybe like, a, like some of the smaller trucks can go in there, like if they, they have to do an access road, correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't look like it would take too much um, to kind of, to make it into a, a walking path. Um, so I don't... And this road, go, I mean, this goes all the way up to... Where did you say? Um, from where we're at, I mean, we're like right by um, Van Buren and Bolivar. Um, and if you follow the creek, like to where her friend lives, it's right almost at the corner of like San Juan Grade and Russell, and right in that area. Um, either that or it's real deep. It's not a long stretch, about a quarter of a mile, maybe, not that much. Just keep it so, that stretch, that the path that they're talking about. Or where it discovers the water goes up by uh, Crazy Boys Canyon Road in San and then once you get out of the town, the whole thing is the same private property and the people. Um, there's very little opportunity to see them. Yes. Why do you think your friends are keeping interested in your creek? I think so too, because I know. Um, Kazi, in particular, she keeps on telling me that she wants to get involved with oceanography. Um, she really likes fish and oceans and... Um, and dinosaur bones. She also... Have you kept a diary? That's when you go out on your walks and you start That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. Well, I have a whole bunch of journals, but like, I don't write and I just draw on it. Yeah, at least it's more of a... Audit, uh, artist. She likes to draw stuff. And now, Kazi, I know you have diaries. But I like fill them up with words and hearts <laughs> and stars. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Maybe the whole family goes out should keep a little diary. See. That's a good idea. Kind of keep track of the changes and um, hopefully get some more new wildlife in there. Especially, um, I think okay. next month there's supposed to be a. Uh, event going on where they're going to be planting some native plants in there. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we're looking forward to getting involved in because um, it'd be really nice to see the area kind of return to its natural habitat and to see more wildlife come back in there. I know I'd enjoy it and so they would they. I love to see animals, mainly stuff in the water, <laughs> like fish and to have fish at home. Well, they don't die. Good. <laughs> Still, you got fake fish. Fake? Oh, yeah. I have fake fish. And I make some out of wiki sticks. 
Cassie. Okay. So is there anything else you guys would like to share about the about the park? Oh, under the bridge, um, the side to the right, right has more sand than the other. Oh, I see. So that. I get, I guess, like. The bridge oh. has like two channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess like all the sand washed in. Mm -hmm. like, there was one thing that you guys learned. Remember, underneath the bridge, there's the um, the big drains. Oh, yeah. The, oh. Yeah. Maybe. And where do those drains start at? Remember? Up they above the road. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of learning about the draining system of the roads and stuff in there when we were doing this stenciling and those storm you, drains. You said um, one of them they could kind of down. hook together that oh. the storm drain empties out to the drain so they see where it starts and where it ends. So now they have a really good idea if something goes in the storm drain exactly where it's going to end up. So, Because he said the holes look like they would like lead to Canada. <laughs> I said they would lead to garbage world, not Canada. Okay. You said it would lead to Canada. I said China. <gasps> Well, I think that's really interesting. I'm so glad you like to go out. I just had one question. You know, don't answer me. Answer either one of them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, knowing, you know, what you know about what used to be in the creek, mm -hmm. the wildlife, animals, all that kind of stuff, and what's there now, how there's a lot less there, mm -hmm. do you think that all that wildlife could ever come back? You think we could fix it make it better like it was? Like yes, yes, yes. Oh, definitely. I, I think, love that. I mean, thanks to, to local groups that are going to, if you know, if you bring back the, the plants and if you just take, you know, it, I mean, some just kind of simple steps to help prevent the pollution from getting in there, it can be, I mean, I think it could definitely return back to the way it was. I feel like they should just put a giant screen over it. So just in case of any, like, like garbage flies by, the screen will catch it. That's good. Maybe you can come up with ideas that can help help prevent that and help keep it clean. I think we should put in lily pads and then Rob will keep on coming back. Well, if we plant the, the original plants that are supposed to be there, maybe they will come back. But definitely. I we think there it. should be dirt on the bottom instead of cement. Why was the cement put there? Probably to make it easy, a little bit easier so it doesn't, as like a, a path that it always stays on or? It, it, um, so the bottom of the channel was like rode down, and if they want to clean it out, it makes it a little easier. That was done in the 70s, right when your mom was born, back in that time. I was so old. They didn't have good ideas then, and they know better. They wouldn't do that again now. So things are getting better. I feel, I feel like so they... scared when we went down the thing because when the cars pass by, it would make noise in the little holes. I would plug my ears. I feel like if they didn't put the cement down, then maybe a lot of fish would still be there. Now. I wish it was kind of the there was kind of more water, so like more things could come. Come. Because where does the water originate? Does it is it like a natural spring at the very end or? No, is that like well, runoff? In the summer, Santa Rita Creek is dry. Mm -hmm. So the water you're seeing now is all from the rain. Okay. And if they're irrigating the fields and it runs off the fields, they irrigate too much and the irrigation water runs off the fields and ends up in the creek. Mm -hmm. Upstream. Do you guys know where um, La Guanita Elementary School is? No. Oh, way down on San Juan Grade Road? Yeah, it starts behind that school in the hills. So there's a lot of strawberry fields and other crops there. So they, when they water it and the water runs off the fields, it also ends up in the creek. And that's why there's water in the creek in the summertime. If that didn't happen, the creek would be fairly dry in the summer. So all the reason you see water now is because it's been raining. And the, you know, it hasn't rained for a while, so the water's going to get lower and lower and lower. And when it rains again, so it'll come up again. Because, like, a lot of times when, like, the concrete in the river crack or creek cracks, like, it kind of go faster after that. And then, like, it'll be harder for, remember, like, it was kind of hard for our boats to go down. Like, it'd sink. Yeah, it would go fast. Like, it would crack. kind of sink. And then it would get all slow. Like, and they would just, like, sink. Go to the edge or something. Yeah. You had your old, old boat. Oh. You know that you, ever, you know that, yeah. that creek has another name. It's also known as Little Bear Creek. Have you ever heard anybody talk about Little no. Bear Creek? No. Yeah. And it seems like 
over time that has become known more as Santa Rita Creek. But before the 70s, earlier than that, way back in the ninth, early 1900s, way before your mom was born or your dad, it was known as Little Bear Creek. So it kind of has two names, and people tell me that they know it as Little Bear Creek, and they get mad when I call it Santa Rita Creek. But the new maps are saying Santa Rita, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. Did you just call it Double Creek? Yeah, Double Creek is two names. Two name Creek. Oh, okay. So I was just wondering if you have ever heard of anybody call it Little Bear Creek. Mm -mm. Okay. Maybe on some of the older maps they'd say it. Yeah, it does, actually. Yeah. And But some... Kids your age have come up to me. Don't you know that's called Little Bear Creek? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> their parents talked to them. Yeah. Do you know where the name originated? Mm -hmm. Maybe bears. Our whole history project will figure that one out. Who? Maybe bears were there. Could have been. Maybe oh. from the Ohlone Indians that used to live there. That's or because the there's berries. And Little. bears <laughs> like to eat them. Okay. And maybe that's how the bears came. Who knows? It'll be a mystery. Maybe you guys can help solve it. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Where's my little mic frying glass? Yeah. <laughs> maybe because cats come, or dogs, because they look like bears. <laughs> no, they just look like little miniature bears with thinner arms and yes. legs. Yes. Well, one time, way long time ago, there used to be grizzly bears. Aren't so they like... State flag. That's a grizzly bear, California grizzly bear. Are there still grizzly bears? No. They all... They, no. People shot them all and that was it. That's yeah, just China. sad. Because yeah. I thought I heard, like, on a movie, like, somehow they said grizzly bears or something. I thought it was grizzly bears. Mm -hmm. they, they still exist. Just not in California. Yeah. There are there are brown bears. In Alaska. There are black bear. Maybe. Okay. No, wait, maybe you're right. There might be a be in Alaska. You guys ever seen a bear? No. no. There's black bears in California. You're going but, to Yosemite but, National Park. Oh, it's like an I have. Wait. The what, one in Sioux? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you know? Just a, a oh, good you know, guess. I'm, you know, I'm, pro I'm going to the zoo, probably. Oh, the San Francisco you know, zoo. The only wildlife I've seen in the area, and it's not really near Santa Rita Creek, is when we went out to Tora Park. Oh. We were out there. Oh, yeah. Um, Did you see turkeys? Uh, no, we were out. Um, I wanted oh, to see a turkey. It was when we were doing um, the geocaching. And, you know, it was a, uh, it was a bobcat. Oh, oh, my God. It was out there. It was, like, stalking. Um, we don't know what it was, maybe like a little rabbit or something, but it was out there and it would like freeze and it would go and then it would freeze and it took off running. I'd never seen one in the area before. I think I have um, seen like, a, what are they called, like an elk or something? Some deer? Yeah. I thought I saw one when we were walking up there with, in Toro Park with Chris. Oh yeah, there we is like deers out the there. Beginning. But if you go walking starting now, in February and March is the breeding season for turkeys, <laughs> and you'll see the males, they have very blue heads, and they'll spray it with big feathers. They're really pretty. And they, they parade around in Toro Park, down in the, down the low areas there. So you might see them. Yeah, really I bet I know what you say right now, Cuzzy. It would be really what? nice if, if one day we could <laughs> bring the, the creek back and yeah. have a little bit more wildlife oh in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There are possums around here. Have you guys seen possums? I've seen rac guys? raccoons. Have you? Mm-hmm. Oh. They're back here. Oh, good. And there's possums. Have you girls seen yes. raccoons or possums? One in our backyard. One, yeah, because mm -hmm. pretty much attacked our turkey. Skunks? Um, no. Yes. No, no skunks. <laughs> I've heard some frog. But somehow I, in our class. I smell something creepy whenever like we go down um, near uh, Andy's old house. Um, the one before she had this one, mm -hmm. like, it would smell funny. Like, Maybe there oh, might be a skunk in the area. Remember when we had our last sleepover over there? Oh, yeah. And there it, was... it, smelled, it smelled like skunk. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. there was bobcats over there. Yeah, it is bobcats over there. You know what, did we have a 
like a raccoon or a possum? At our uh, house? Yeah. Yes, we've had raccoons. With and they a possum attacked all of our little girls. Little girl. Oh. oh, remember before we had the rooster? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, one attacked Mar uh, our... Chicks No, we <laughs> talked about marshmallow. Oh. We had a, a couple little chickens and one of the, the raccoon in the backyard was coming after those ones, so that's why it was coming back to in, our, in, in our neighborhood, so. It was hunting. It was hunting. Mm. You know what? I think I've seen a, like, a stuffed bear at Andy's house. The one that oh, she has now, yeah. remember? I'm scared of that bear. I, I don't like it at night. Well, you know, um, I mean, one thing, I don't know if this is, I, I've just noticed them more lately, like in the last years, it's the crows in the neighborhood. They, I mean, like two years ago, I would never, I yeah. never didn't see any crows. Mm -hmm. And now they are like all over the place. Oh yeah, there, there's some keep on going into our palm trees. Mm -hmm. And like, it's right in front of our house, we got these two giant palm trees. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't forget. And it's like they're like two. It's like two bird motels. I mean, it's There's like a, filled with birds. We've got owls. Um, yeah, our, our whole front yard is filled, filled with like the owl pellets. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, they, so the kids like to pick them up, and they'll. I don't. You can kind of do mm -hmm. a little scientific research and see what the owl's well, been eating. Me, and my friend Emily, we would collect them. Collect them. We would have little baggies, and I'd be grossed out. I would always pick them up and not Emily because she doesn't like doing that thing. But yeah, I mean, there's a really, it's a nice variety of birds, especially like in the, the season where they're all the little baby birds are hatching. We always get a couple of them that fall out of the tree, so we'll end up taking them out to the, um, SPCA. the SPCA. Uh, but there's the owls, we've got like the doves and all sorts of birds and little, um, I think like the little finches and. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just, it's all right in our front yard. And then just recently, with all the crows, the crows come in and they start feeding off the baby birds. Um, so it's kind of sad. Yeah, it's a little gruesome, but um, maybe like there's like bunches of bunches of crow that I've never seen in the area before. Yeah, so I, I don't know if they've been kicked out of their habitat somewhere else and are now taken up over here. Yeah. Uh, the the I think. I think. One that I think. We, like we were coming home, I saw a giant bird fly into our tree. Do you think it was the owl? Yeah. Oh, one night but we, we saw the owl. We do it hear whitish and blackish. We do always hear the owl, like hooting. Ooh, not a lot of the birds and pigeons. Well, it's not like that, but it was better. No, but we do see uh, hummingbirds. And wait, did we ever see a blue jay? I see the blue jay. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I've seen any blue jays. I've seen it in the backyard when I was. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I do too. Look, they're around the apple tree. Yeah, yeah, the apple tree. I like, guess like during spring when the apples were coming out. I think at the flowers. We better pick the apples because <laughs> they're all over the yard and all they're all gone now. All over marshmallows gray, so we don't want birds dancing all over her grave. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Can you do the Can you do the owl sound? Cause you do it. I can't no. tell. You do it really good. So I, I, I do it terrible. Just try it once. Ooh. Like that. Ooh. <laughs> there. That's <laughs> only <laughs> once. <laughs> uh, what else? Um. Yeah. I guess that's no, all for no. me. No. 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 Okay, that's all for me. Um. I guess. Well, we just hope to stay in the area, and hopefully the creek will get bigger, um, better and better, and we can help bigger. plant native plants and get it cleaned up. And I want to go to the store, buy new plants, bring it back, and be in the area for a long time. Oh.